Good morning, Craig Howard here. Happy to be with you again this morning. It's a little cold outside this morning and my hair is still wet from the shower, so I, uh, I decided to just stay in this morning. But I was reading something that I found fascinating this morning. Um, the finality of it happened about 100 years ago, but back in the early 1800s, uh, a couple of America or a couple of German researchers back in about 1889 uh, discovered insulin. They discovered that if they uh, removed the pain, well, first they, they didn't discover in insulin. They were researching diabetes. Back then, diabetes was a death sentence. If you got diabetes, eventually you were going to die. And so they were researching it and they took, they removed the pancreas from a dog and found out that very soon the, the dog developed uh, symptoms of, of diabetes and passed away. I know that sounds cruel, but that was the way the research went. Later on, two researchers uh, found they could remove this substance from a dog's pancreas and keep another dog alive that had diabetes. It was later named, that that substance they took out was later named insulin. Then uh, a little later on, they learned how to remove this substance from a cow's pancreas and refine it a little bit more. And in 18, or, yeah, 1922, uh, a 14-year-old boy received the first injection of insulin. He was on death's door and he received the first injection of insulin, and it saved his life. You say, well, what's that got to do with anything? Well, I found it interesting because there was a lot of research, a lot of thought going into curing this disease that we call insulin, or that we call diabetes, and they found the answer. The answer was insulin, and everybody celebrated. Everybody was excited about it. Certainly the family of this 14-year-old child was excited about the idea because like I said, up until this time, a diagnosis of diabetes eventually led to death. Now there was hope. Now there was something that gave life. It's interesting to me that we can get so excited about a cure for our physical bodies. But when it comes to understanding that we all suffer from another form of disease and that's the disease of sin and it's just as deadly in fact it's more deadly because it can bring death for an eternity but there's a cure that cure is Jesus Christ that cure is knowing Jesus as your Savior and Jesus provided that cure many many years ago in fact he said Jesus said in John chapter 5 verse 24 <clears throat> very truly I tell you Whoever hears my words and believes him who sent me has eternal life and will not be judged, but has crossed over from death to life. It says in John chapter 10, verse 10, Jesus said, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Not only in heaven, but right now, have it to its fullest. Because we understand that through him we are forgiven if, and I've seen this before, if I were diagnosed with cancer, the scourge of our time, and all of a sudden I walked into a doctor's office and the doctor said, the latest tests show that your cancer is gone. It would be a time of rejoicing. It would be a time of excitement. I would go tell everybody that had cancer, you need to go see this doctor he took care of my cancer. Everything is great. Or if I had cancer and somebody had come up with a new cure, an injection that I could take or a pill that I could take, and all of a sudden as I take that pill or take that injection, the cancer was, it just went away. It just got rid of it. It was gone. I would be excited. I would be celebrating. I would be telling everybody that I knew of that had anybody that had any kind of cancer, you got to go get this injection, you got to go get this pill. We've been saved from a life of eternal death. 
through Jesus Christ. And yet we don't get excited enough to tell the people around us. People don't see our excitement about our relationship with Christ and want to say, what, what, what do you have? What, what, what is it that has you so excited? We don't go around telling them you need Jesus. And we really should. It's part of who we are as part of the body of Christ. We have been saved from an eternal death. We should be sharing that news. Something to think about today. Well, I hope you have a great day today. I've got a full day today. Um, and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you, Lord willing, tomorrow. Mom and Dad, if you're watching, I love you. Talk to you later.